It was announced. What's up, sons? It's Blind Dragon with Son of Attack once again, and today we have yet another Talking Head video. Today we're going to be covering the new RX 6700 XT from AMD and how we think it will mine. This is purely speculative because there are no cards in hand currently, and we can't really do much more than look at what they have released today, just a few hours ago and what those specifications are, how those specifications stack up to the competition, mainly within their own line because of the architecture will be able to delineate essentially what the mining power is going to project it be. And hopefully we'll give you guys an idea on whether or not you should be purchasing one. So without further ado, let's get into it right after we talk about Rocket Chat. If you would like to join Rocket Chat, you can hit the join button down below the channel, head on over to the memberships tab and find the secret registration URL under the connecting on social media section. If you have any issues, hit me up on Twitter at Son of a Tech and otherwise enjoy. All right, so AMD pretty much released all their specifications for the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT. And this is basically going to be a follow up to the 5700 XT, which was previously the top of the line that you could even get. And now we have, you know, the 6800 and the 6800 XT as well as the 6900 XT. And this is just going to be a cut down version. Now, for mining, what we're going to be looking at in particular is going to be the memory because as you know, pretty much memory across the board on almost all algorithms outside of a couple is the most important factor when determining the mining performance of a GPU. We'll be covering what we think it's going to basically hash at in regards to Ethereum. And then later we can go ahead and review maybe other coins. If you guys are interested, we could talk about Octopus or of course Kapow with Ravencoin and maybe even VertHash. Now all of these algorithms behave pretty differently. And so I feel like we need to break those out into different videos, but getting into it, if we take a look here, we have the specifications from AMD. 40 compute units with a base frequency of 2321 megahertz and a boost frequency of up to 2581 megahertz. For gamers, this is incredible. Obviously, the compute units have been cut down over the 6800, but that frequency is absolutely insane. Out of the box, boosting up to 2581 megahertz is just what is going on. I can't wait to play with it as far as for gaming benchmarks and so on. You have 40 ray traced accelerators or ray accelerators. That's for the ray tracing portion of it. And then moving on from there, we really want to get into the memory. So typical board power though, which is going to be important is 230 watts. Obviously, I think for mining, you're going to be able to get this a lot lower because a lot of that's going to be going into the core clocks for gaming in particular. And seeing that those core clocks are so high, if we're able to get that boost frequency or the frequency of the core down to like 1150 megahertz, which shouldn't be an issue if we're looking at the 6800 and up, then we should see a total power draw once we crank that down of quite a bit lower. My assumption would be somewhere around 80 to 100 watts in there, depending on how far you push your power play tables and so on. But the memory is really what we want to look at. And unfortunately, I like you can see here, we have the infinity cache at 96 megabytes. And while infinity cache has proven to make up for the smaller memory interfaces, or at least help them in some form or fashion, it doesn't quite affect mining yet. Now, hopefully, and this is a real big hopefully, but hopefully someone would figure out uh, that develops any sort of mining application on how to unlock the infinity cache to affect mining. But I am pretty, I'm pretty suspect on that. I don't think that's really gonna happen, unfortunately. But memory interface is 192 bit, and that's gonna be down from the 256 bit. The memory bandwidth is 384 gigabytes per second, and the memory type is still just that GDDR6. Now, Linus Tech Tips on his kind of review of this announcement had stated that maybe they're gonna clock the memory higher, but I find that doubtful seeing that it is still just GDDR6, and they're kind of at that cap. 
gap. Meaning really when you're looking at overclocking that memory, they are at like 2000 megahertz out of the box. You can go up to 2100, 2150 with you know, the right silicon lottery. But I don't think that even if you got a perfectly bin like set of memory on of GDDR6, you're gonna go over 2150. They may come out of the box for, with a higher memory clock at like 2050 or 2075 or something along those lines, but I don't think that your ultimate top is gonna go up any higher, essentially. So with that though, we did some calculations and on the bus width, we went ahead and said 192 bits is what percent of 256 bit and that's 75 so we know that the 6000 series or the 6800 pretty much through the 6900 XT all perform within the same level on Ethereum, which is 63 mega hash a second. So I put in here, of course, because those are 256 bit bus, I put in here 75% of 63 mega hash, and that comes out to a 47.25 mega hash a second on these cards. And then like I stated, we can assume somewhere between 80 and 100 watts. So if we wanted to just head on over to what to mine real quick, let's go ahead and type that in. We would be at 47.25. 0.5 mega hash at 90 watts with a average cost of 10 cents a kilowatt hour for the home miner and that's going to put you at three dollars and 95 cents a day now the price of these is actually pretty good let's take a look here i did download the video yeah so currently they are saying it's going to be 479 us dollars which is really priced quite well especially considering all the shortages we'll have to see if that is actually accurate alrighty so popping open the calculator if we did 479 divided by 3.95 a day your payout would be 121 days out provided it's the current difficulty and the current price of ethereum and so on so it's really not that bad if you're looking at you know it from an investment perspective if you were able to purchase right now so final thoughts on the rx 6700 xt it doesn't appear that the mining performance is going to be good it's definitely not going to be on par with the 5700 xt as far as its predecessor it's definitely not going to be on par with the 3060 ti and it's not even really on par with like an rx 6800 or 6800 xt so why should you purchase one for mining? Well, it is uh, potentially pretty good at other algorithms because of the high boost clock, depending on, you know, which coin and so on. I'm kind of curious what we're looking at with the 6000 series on Octopus. And that's kind of what I want to move towards taking a look at because we do know the 2000 series for NVIDIA were performing really well on Octopus. That could be a driver thing or it could be a core clock thing because those core clocks were super awesome. But it's just gonna take us a little bit of time to figure it out. So stay tuned. I will be doing some more in-depth testing on Octopus with the newer AMD GPUs because I do feel like there could be something there, especially with this one with the high core clock. We'll see. It's still memory intensive and that's the problem is like at the end of the day, memory is going to always win because of how intensive it is. And with the bus being cut down to 192 bit, I'm going to be hard pressed to say that it's going to be any good for mining at all as far as like compared to the other options that are currently out. If you guys enjoyed the video, give a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell down below, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.